I'm a licensed clinical social worker, and I manage clinical operations for the Invest Employee Assistance Program. We serve the Vermont Food Bank as their employee assistance program. And um, I'm just very honored to be here at, at this incredibly wonderful and political conference today. So um, you're all here for a reason. And I'm expecting that that's because you've ex been exposed to um, hostility or anger in your workplace. And we all are too in our personal lives, but we'll be focusing more on the workplace today. So today what I'm hoping you'll take away is um, some ideas, maybe just one new idea for preventing or defusing an escalation in another person. But on the flip side, we're also going to be talking about defusing ourselves, because we have to defuse ourselves before we can defuse someone else, okay? So that's going to be, that's about self-regulation. So we're going to be talking about the both sides of it. And the self-awareness about our own triggers. And that's, we have to be self-aware of what triggers us before we can defuse ourselves and keep a situation calm. Um, we're also going to be talking about the, you know, awareness that really an anger can be a product of feeling powerless. And you just heard that in the speech about food insecurity, and you all know this too. You're all more experts on it than I am because you're working with food insecure people all the time. So the feeling of powerlessness for our clients or our participants, whatever you call people who are coming to you for services. And the communication skills are really the key to de-escalating ourselves and others. And um, they're really what we have. So this, this workshop, I hope, will be empowering to you to realize what tools you already have in your toolkit. So um, I'm just wondering, you know, what are some, how does anger show up in your workplace? And Henry, if you can write a few things up on the, the flip chart when people are just throwing them out. What do you see, because I'm not an expert on your workplaces, when anger blows up there, how is that happening? Yes? Someone's denied services. Okay. And what does it look like? Um, they're, they become hostile and angry and confrontational, I guess. Okay. So when someone's denied services, they can become angry, hostile, and confrontational. Anyone else? Swearing. Swearing, screaming, screaming, slamming of doors, <coughs> slamming doors. <laughs> yeah, <they're all> <laughs> <laughs> uh, I saw someone back there with their hand up. It just comes out sometimes. No? <laughs> um, anyone else? A deafening silence. Oh, a deafening. <laughs> just put silence. So they just stare at you like I can't believe you're denying me what I'm asking. Nonverbal, you know. The, are they using body language that's angry, maybe? Clenched fists. Clenched fists. Wow. Threats. Excuse me? Threats. Threats, such as, can you give me an example of a threat? I'm going to call your executive director. Okay. So, <laughs> threatening to go above your head. I'm going to call your executive director. Or it's your fault my kids are hungry. Mm -hmm. The guilt trip. It's your fault my kids are hungry. And, and let me just point out that we call that bait. Okay, so that, you know, obviously we all have empathy for what they're going through. So, but I'm, I'm in this model that I'm going to teach you today, we consider that bait because um, that person's going to try to hook you and get you to, you know, get into, you know, they're going to try to get into your head and use that as bait. So guilt trips and threats. Anything else? Tears. Crying. Tears, yeah. crying. Yeah. Seeking recourse, like going to the newspaper. To oh, yeah. Your and that's really Set scary up. for you, isn't scary. it? <laughs> so s s telling, or seeking, going to the papers to write letters to the editor or have an article written about how terrible you are. Mm -hmm. yeah. Facebook. Oh, oh Facebook. Yeah. Do they go on your website and put yeah. things? Or? Mm -hmm. Really? Really? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so really, ret lashing out at you in the, in public. That can be so upsetting and traumatic. Public shaming. Yeah. Public shaming. Oh. Yeah. There's not, not a lot worse than that, is there? Not really. Invading personal space. Mm-hmm. Getting right into your face. 
getting into your circle of comfort, of space. Mm -hmm. Invading personal space is what she said. And that's one of the tactics. Um, so I'm using the word bait and tactics, you know, sort of together. Those are uh, getting into your personal space, staring you down, you know, getting big and sort of helping. Okay, I think, yes, anything else, Amy? I was just wondering, um, I, I don't think, when you said tactics, I was thinking it seems so reactive that it doesn't feel planned. Mm -hmm. I'm not worth the mic, but okay. <laughs> I, I was just saying that some, it, it's so reactive, it doesn't feel like a planned tactic. It's, it's really from the gut. Okay. <laughs> Okay, that is a great point. So she was just saying sometimes it doesn't feel like a, a strategic tactic. It's, some, it's really more reactive from the gun. And we're going to be talking about the stress response today and how people can get triggered into the stress response. And that's when they are acting out like that and it's right from the gut. So the system um, of defusing that I'm going to talk about today is the CARP system. And it stands for Control, Acknowledge, Refocus, and Problem Solve. So the first part of this talk will be on controlling the interaction. Uh, and that is where you need to be aware of yourself and your own triggers and keep yourself calm. And uh, we'll go into it. And then acknowledging their issues with empathy is really the most important thing. It can happen really quickly or it can take a little while if somebody's really venting at you. Um, and I'm going to give you handouts afterwards too. I didn't want to give them to you right now because I really wanted us to be more interactive. So you'll get this whole PowerPoint. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. I'm so sorry I forgot to tell you that at the beginning. Right. <laughs> I'm hiding them so you won't grab them right now. <laughs> okay. So, um, so, first of all, let's just talk, and you've already mentioned some things, but what escalates hostility and anger? What can get somebody going? So, I'm just going to go through this. We've got insecurity, and we, we're talking a lot today about people who are food insecure. They don't have the food. They're also insecure in the economic, you know, strata of society, and possibly insecure about their own being a client. It's hard to be a client. Um, maybe, you know, we could all think about ways that we've been clients through our lives and remember how kind of humiliating that can be sometimes. Um, and lack of choices. That can, maybe someone comes in and they, they really don't have a lot of choices and they're being shut down on one or two things or whatever. That can really make somebody feel hostile or angry. You've all seen this play out, I know. Um, asymmetrical power. So you're the worker, they're the client, you've got the power, they don't. That's what I mean by asymmetrical power. And you may not feel powerful. You might be a volunteer in a food shelf, you might, you know, or you might, whatever. You may not feel like a powerful person, but you have the power in that situation to give or to decline services. And the perception is everything. So when um, someone comes in, their perception is that you're running things. And so you're, you have to be aware of your power. And um, disrespectful behavior. So they might perceive you're being disrespectful. You may not think so, but they might. So that can really escalate hostility and anger as well. So we have to be really aware of how we're, how we're behaving with people. Anger can help us feel in control. It's the top, the top of this ice, uh, iceberg. It's the, the explosion up here. Um, but anger is really a secondary emotion. What's underneath anger are some feelings like rejection, frustration, hurt, scared, disappointed, or threatened. So. If, it's really good for us to be aware. So when somebody's being angry or you know venting at us, for us to sort of think about what's the subtext under here? What's really under the explosion? There are deep feelings under there. And this can help us with our empathy, because it's hard to feel empathic when um, somebody's verbally abusing us or whatever. 
So we need to know what our hot buttons are, what our triggers are, and I'm going to ask you to turn to a person next to you and talk to them about what, you know, are the few things that really trigger you, what gets you really angry right away or afraid right away. And some clues are, um, you know, tone of voice, uh, specific words or actions or expressions. So um, could you guys just go ahead and just turn to each other and, and talk about your triggers? Thanks. Hi, how are you? Thank you. 